So yesterday I discovered a great Canadian film, a great Canadian horror film for that matter. And being a fellow uh, Canadian horror filmmaker, I really want to shed light on this one because this is one that I just found. I walked into it totally blind. Uh, well, not 100% blind. Like I, I seen the poster. I was Googling Canadian horror films, seen the poster for Blood Quantum. I thought that looks pretty crazy. It kind of looks like a Mad Maxi hobo with a shotgunny kind of just like post-apocalyptic vibe from it so i watched the trailer and i'm like damn this looks pretty fucking good i actually watched the trailer with my uncle and he was like yeah that looks pretty fucking good so later on last night i watched blood quantum it's directed by uh jeff barnaby who also directed a film called rhymes for young ghouls which is a film that uh, focuses on a residential school which if you're unaware with a residential school back in like the 70s uh, like, people that went through this shit are still alive to talk about this stuff. Like, P First Nations kids were taken from their homes, stripped of their fucking identity, stripped of their rights, stripped of, you know, mistreated, abused, uh, murdered. Like, the worst of the worst happened to these kids. And, uh, you know, I I'm po more than positive that Jeff Barnaby is more than capable of delivering uh, not only a fucking um, amazing movie, but also, like, sending a message or, like, setting, you know educating people because not enough people not enough canadian people know about the residential schools speaking as a canadian citizen that went through canadian fucking public school never once was a residential school mentioned high school never once was a residential school message or mentioned you know when i learned about a residential school it wasn't until after i was a fucking high school dropout went to an adult school to get my credits so i could go to college which i later on did and graduated and all that shit but i met this dude who was actually a buddy of Oh, is a cousin of one of my buddies and he's the one that told me about it and i was like that is fucked that is fucking crazy dude i'm like why like like why don't they talk about that because it's scary and fucking people are pussies they can't handle the truth you know like fucking jack nicholson said so but uh i'm like i said i'm sure jeff barnaby nailed that movie as well i can't wait to watch that one but blood quantum is his, his second feature which is the one that i watched last night and holy shit now before i get uh, over my head because i'm sure i sure i'm sure i will this isn't a review this is just me saying this movie is awesome here's what i think man and i if if anyone wants to like watch this movie and then do like a fucking skype chat and talk about it i'm totally down for that um but okay so it is a zombie film now and it's not your typical like zombie film from like 10 years ago you know like okay so after Zombieland came out and all these, you know, like there was a whole string of shitty zombie films uh, right out of the gate when I left high school, like 2009, 2010-ish. So many horrible fucking movies came out, like straight to Space Channel, straight to sci-fi. The effects were garbage. Uh, the acting was garbage. Like all around, it was just like, what the fuck were they thinking with this? Like, what the fuck is going on here? Uh, but this is not that kind of movie. This is a zombie movie that carries a message i would say 100 percent like it's 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 a type of movie that uh i think if you removed the zombies it would still be an impactful movie you know because i feel like uh the way that like the natives were treated ha have been be have been treated all, all the way up till now in 2020 uh you feel like the you feel their anger and you feel their their they're pissed off like why some of the people in this movie get pissed off and do the things that they do uh so basically this is what the movie is about the movie is about uh chief of police of this indian reservation and he's like he's got a kid and he's got like a step kid and uh he's he's got his ex old lady as he calls her and you know it basically his his life or matter of fact not his life but his morning is starting off like shit. I would compare it to that of Chief Brody from Jaws, all right? Because his day kind of starts off like, wow, this is going to be a shitty day. Uh, and it is because basically through a comedy of errors happening because of this zombie apocalypse coming, uh, we see fish that should not be flopping, flopping. We see dogs that should not be barking, barking. And... I don't want to like spoil anything so we'll just go from there but I will say that this film you know what this isn't so much of a spoiler but at, at about the 25 20 25 minute mark it shifts in time uh it, it jumps about six months into the future so uh the, the first 25 
minutes of the film revolve around uh, the initial what the fuck is going on situation, right? Like, what's going on? Why? What's these guys? These people are biting people. What's going on here? Uh, flash forward six months, the reserve is set up as like a fucking battlefield or not a battlefield excuse me like a a bunker sort of thing like a little community you know it's it's crazy man and uh they they're letting all these white people in because the chief of police his son is got a white chick knocked up so uh and she's convincing them to let all these people in which is a bad idea and uh there's this one dude named Lysol who's who's the chief's I th- I believe stepson who's like, we can't keep doing this, this is fucked, they're gonna turn on us, all that kind of shit, and, uh, it, it's, I wouldn't say he's got an exact, like, Night of the Living Dead dude in the basement thing happening there, but he does have his points, you know, and I agree with that guy, but he does do some stupid shit later on in the film, and, uh, uh, one thing I gotta point out is, uh, all the natives are immune to the bites, they're immune to the bites, but, if they get like bit like bad, they, you know, if they get their throat ripped out, they're not going to make it, you know, but if they get like bit on the arm, whatever, stitch it up, it's all good. So people are going there and, uh, they keep referring to, well, they don't keep, they only mention it really once that this baby, uh, like what's going to happen because is it immune? You know what I mean? Or is it going to come out dead? Because earlier on in the film, I'll just spoil this one to shit because, uh, this chick, this pregnant lady gets like the baby inside of her is zombie and eats out, like (laughs) eats her out, (laughs) eats, doesn't eat her out, eats from within coming out of her body. Okay. It's cool shit. It's graphic, but that's what we're here for, man. Like I want to see shocking horror stuff. And once again, it, it like, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I had the vibes of like Dawn of the Dead, the remake in terms of lighting and also with that baby thing like whenever i think dawn of the dead the remake did one of the craziest things with a baby ever like you know shoots it in the head and all that stuff but this one is just like pretty fucking crazy man yeah i was disturbed i wasn't disturbed like i'm fucking oh I'm like gonna have issues now but i'm just saying like this movie did its job as a horror film and it kicked ass so uh yeah I hope I sold it to somebody out there. Like, I just think it was really fucking good stuff. And on top of that, like I said, it is Canadian. So that is a plus. And, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I'll end this video with talking about, like, how I interpret the message or interpret, interpretate the message, if you know what I mean. Uh, I feel like this movie showcases that, uh, especially right now, it's very effective. Like, we have a lot of reserves where I'm, where I'm from. I go to one, like once a week sometimes twice a week to get gas uh weed all that people get their smokes there like being like the reserves are no like most people from london are not a stranger to like oneida you know what i mean at least because you go there you get cheap fucking gas like when gas is a dollar 19 a liter in town it's like 90 cents a liter on the reserve so obviously we're gonna say fuck the government we're not gonna pay your fucking bullshit tax it shouldn't be there in the fucking first place uh so i don't know man i just feel like with the whole COVID thing, the reserve got shut down and they weren't letting people in. And that's how I felt they should have handled it in Blood Quantum. Like, with the people in Blood Quantum, they should have been like, you know what? Fuck you. You guys aren't coming in no matter what. You know what I mean? No matter what. Like, we don't care if you're fucking, if your daughter's dying here, whatever. Like, fuck you. You're not coming in. And uh, that was where the mistake was made by the people in the film. Not as a mistake of, on terms of the filmmakers. I'm saying... The people in the movie, that was their crucial fuck up that uh, uh, got them killed. And like another thing this movie does great is they, they use uh, animation in there. Almost like a Kill Bill kind of thing to to just show parts of the story. And I thought that was fucking cool as hell, man. I'm all for like mixing the uh, the the formats, if, if you want to call it that. Like mixing live action with animation or even... Uh, 3d animate like as long as it's like convey like giving you something and it's like it's got this awesome flow like i'm all for it 100 percent you know uh yeah blood quantum definitely check that shit out and uh stay tuned and check out uh, some other videos on the channel so adios